Welcome to Thinking Green. Uh, we're doing something a little different today that we haven't done, oh, I don't know, in six, seven, eight years. Uh, so um, it's spring, St. Patrick's Day is coming up and we're already in the middle of the season. So uh, we're having a music show and today we are uh, taping a show with the band Paddywhack that does Irish and traditional music, uh, band members, first names, Michael, Bob, Donna, Patrice, Ned, Alan, and John are going to be playing for you. And uh, after they play, we'll talk to a few of the band members. So sit back and enjoy, and um, welcome Patty Whack. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our Fatty Wack, <laughs> and that was uh, that was called Hundred Pipers, and the one before that is uh, Mary's Way, and this one's called Mason's Apron. <laughs> Here's a waltz for everybody. I don't know where to stand. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I gotta catch my breath. <laughs> you. <laughs> the whistler does too. All right. Yeah, the whistler does. All right. Too. Is there anything? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess this worked, great. Right? We'll just yeah. play straight through, and then we'll have a little conversation. Yeah. Sounds good to me. And a little bit of good clean fun. A little bit of good clean fun. That's right. We're, we were told that we're funny when we have that little yeah. riff part. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> encouraging that. Band banter. We have another waltz for you, Rana. This is called Margaret's Waltz. My grandmother's name was Margaret, so I'm a little partial to the song. And then we're going to follow it up with, uh, with our namesake song. It's called Paddywhack, and that's the name of the band, Paddywhack. And uh, I played, remember, I played the intro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob Lochran, 
Lot Gren, our lead vocalist, on a couple of tunes. This one's called The Foggy Dew. And I'm wishing everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. That's for sure. Let's see. Uh, got a set of tempo. Huh? Pipes did hum, no battle drum did sound its red tattoo. But the Angelus bell or the Liffey swell rang out in the foggy dew. Right proudly high over Dublin town, they hung out the flag of war. T'was better to die neath an Irish sky than at Suva or Sudel Bar. And from the plains of Royal Meath, strong men came hurrying through. While Britannia's Huns with their long range guns sail in through the foggy dew. Feels it after a while. This 
next one's called Fields of Aftermath. songs to sing 
It's lonely around the field till that wind rises. Lonely the field till that wind rises. Where once we watched the small free birds fly, our love was on the wing. We had dreams and songs to sing. It's lonely around the field. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Nice job. So we've got a couple nice more songs. Uh, and uh, this next one we picked out because we're in New London. And it's a maritime place. And this song is called Out on the Ocean. So even if you're at home, way. I don't want to block ways. So feel free to sing. <laughs>
jolly grog, me jolly jolly grog. It's all for me beer and tobacco. Well, I spent all me tin on the lassies drinking gin. So across the western ocean I must wander. Scottish, not Irish, but uh, I'm sure you'll we'll be forgiven for that once you hear it. Sit and talk for a little bit. Yeah, I'd like to invite a couple of you to come sit and talk about 
how the band started. I think we're starting with Michael and Ned. Yeah, that's right. So we if are. you want to come over right. here and we'll chat. And I guess you should mic with the laughs. Okay, that was great. And I guess uh, my first question is, I know that many of you have been musicians in Southeast Connecticut for a long time. How did this particular group come together? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> the reason why I'm sitting here. <laughs> well, we actually, uh, I started studying fiddle about seven or eight years ago. And, uh, and then my friend Donna joined me on the penny whistle and we were learning all these Irish songs. Um, and St. Patty's Day was coming along three years ago. And it was it was my I th you know somebody might disagree with me but it was it was my idea I'm pretty sure that uh, <laughs> you can duke it out we, later <laughs> we should right exactly and we we should play uh, all day long on St Patrick's Day if we could wherever they would have us we'd play and until we dropped and that's pretty much what we did we found a bunch of venues and we played for free and um, then we, we we didn't do a lot after that first year. But we reconvened for uh, the second St. Patty's Day last year. And by that time, we had attracted uh, people that actually knew how to play their instruments. And that's really helped a lot. Um, and and uh, in fact, uh, at some point, that's when I called you. Yeah. And I said, you know, we really need a rhythm player. And I know you play some rhythm instruments. And he goes, and go ahead. Yeah. Tell me about your so, ukulele. Yeah. So, so I play guitar and ukulele. And I was up to, at that point, up to about six or seven ukuleles, I think, and uh, Michael said, you know, you ought to just pick one ukulele. <laughs> that was my wisdom. <laughs> yeah, that one. was his wisdom, and, and, and learn these songs. Because you know, when he first said rhythm, I was thinking, okay, I got my spoons, and I got my, my shaker rag, but no, he meant a rhythm, you know, like a, a, a mu melody, a musical instrument. So uh, I started learning the songs. You know, Michael just came over to my house for a couple afternoons, and then one, you know, one week he said, I'm going to bring a penny whistle player, and Donna came, and then he started bringing in a few more fiddles, and pretty soon we were putting together the band, and uh, and then I, I live on a lake, and during the summer, after the St. Patrick's Day, I said, let's go practice down by the lake, and let's make it an open thing. Anybody who wants to come can come, and this guy that I met walking, he was putting a bass in the back of his car, and I stopped and talked to him. He brought his <laughs> bass down to the lake, and he's been our bottom basis are solid rock ever since. Yeah, yeah, gratefully, yeah. And that was, uh, so that was last year, St. Patty's Day too, and, and then we, um, we uh, stayed together, and we, we just were having so much fun, we decided just to keep playing. And uh, I have an interest in old time music as well, uh, another uh, genre of the fiddle, and so I've been um, uh, bringing some of those songs in, so, so right now we're calling ourselves Irish and old time. And here we are, year three. Uh, we've got some, we actually have some, uh, some shows coming up. Um, we we uh, made up some business cards and managed to, to get hired in a couple of places. We'll be at um, Tommy Sullivan's, an Irish bar in Brantford on Saturday night. That's uh, roughly from six to nine, I think, in, in, the, in the evening. And then the next day on St. Patrick's Day, we'll, be, we'll go back to a uh, place called Landing in Maine in Deep River. Um, for the lunch crowd for 12.30 to 2.30-ish. Um, they, they got in touch with us kind of late and we were already booked to go <laughs> out to a new place called the Shipwreck Tavern um, and that's from four to six, that's in Killingworth. So we're all up around the, the Connecticut River area. And, and now this time of year, I'm guessing you're very much in demand. Yeah, yeah, the March is a crazy month. Um, uh, and actually we, <laughs> We have also been adding, and uh, thanks to Patrice, who's over there singing harmonies and playing the, the bodrun, um, we started uh, adding some sea shanties and, and sea songs as well. So I'm sure they'll be most welcome at the Shipwreck Tavern. I'm uh, sure they uh, will. They well. will be. There's been a, a, a kind of resurgence of, of interest in traditional music, I think, over the last 
well, well, five years or so. One of our more interesting gigs, I think, was uh, there was a school that the elementary school would, had to cancel their trip to Mystic Seaport. So they asked us to come up and be the, mu the, the seaport music for their, their so you seaport had day that they didn't go to. So, so you had like a shanty gig. Yeah, we did. We brought in a lot of shanties. <laughs> That's and a good way to put it. People and, <laughs> and, we, and we actually played, among other things, we played uh, Wellerman, which is a very popular uh, song with the kids. And, and in a room full of about 60 kids, I think every one of them knew the words to that song and sang along <laughs> with us. <laughs> well, was, yeah, that's really fun. great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think we're going to let Leif and John Brown, who are two uh, artists in their own right, uh, take over for us and tell you a little bit about themselves. I just and have one quick yeah. question for Ned. I would not have thought of ukulele as being an Irish instrument. Oh, so how did that fit in with the band? Um, Michael said he needed rhythm, and ukulele was what I was playing. I actually wrote a song about how when you get arthritis, it's hard to play that many strings and make that long a reed. But so I'm going to learn to play the ukulele, get a shot in the thumb, and some CBD, two ibuprofen. <laughs> then you'll see I'll be making music for another 20 years. And we'll, we'll be listening. Yeah. And then the kilt like, brings it over the top. So you know, <laughs> if, in case you're doubting the authenticity of the ukulele, We've got the kill yeah. to, to <laughs> close the gap. <laughs> so well, thanks for having us, Rana. Yeah, um, thanks for coming on. I, I, I'm not sure I'm ready to make a tradition of having music shows every week. Uh, of course. But, yeah. uh, there might but be some important things you talk about once in a while here, too. Yeah, yeah sometime, yeah. you know, but, you know, everyone needs music in their life yeah. also. And it, so, And it's good to be green. It, it is, and this is a very green time of year. It's, uh, yeah. you know, a time of rebirth and things waking up. There you go. So, yeah, thanks right. for, thanks for uh, coming on to the show because it, it's been fun. Yeah, it's great. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to do this as gracefully as we can. Switch yeah, seats even, here. even the big talk shows, you know, the fancy ones, they, they still have traditions, you know, transition times that people are walking in and out. Sure. So... We can do it too on public access. But they're allowed to have commercials during that. <laughs> yeah, we are not allowed to have commercials. That is true. We're the commercial. We're the commercial. We're the commercial. Break. Okay, yeah, so you'll have to hook up with the lab. So, Leif and, and John, how did you get involved with this band? Entirely by accident. That's why you were walking down the road. I was walking down the No, that's not how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it started, for me, it started out just kind of informally uh, going to a couple of uh, jam sessions over at Ned's house and, uh, and meeting all these fine people and kind of getting introduced to uh, some Irish music, which is different than the usual genre that I play with. My, I got a country rock band called the Back Porch Pickers, and this is entirely different, and it's a lot of fun. It's energizing. It's... You know, I'm Irish, so I guess there's a little bit to be said for there. I don't have the legs for a kilt, but you know, we do the best we can with what we got. <laughs> yeah, well, kilts aren't specifically Irish, really. So. Some oh, of them. Yeah. So Irish. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Romans had kilts, didn't they? I don't know. Did something they? Something like that. Togas. Yeah, they had these little skirts they wore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're updating everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the old stuff is relevant, but it does need to be updated a little. So, so Leif, how did you get involved well, with I've this been, band? Um, I started, let's, uh, let's see what happened. I have a gallery in Chester where I s show my paintings and um, my studio. <coughs> and we have these open houses on Friday nights sometimes. And Dana's group came in, um, the, fiddle, the Wandering oh, Fiddlers came in and performed, you know, because they were just going around being flash mob performers and uh, so I asked her hey can I come down and, and you know join the group and she said yeah come on in you know so I went and and I the first day I thought I'll, I can I could follow along with this stuff but man was I wrong <laughs> I had no idea what was going on <laughs> and she gave me some lessons on, on how to read the, the music charts and um, and I stood next to John quite a bit so we could you know I could feel the, the, the rhythm and I, I think I got somewhere with it and um, and then the paddywhack group was going off to do uh, um, this was in January, so it, by March I was ready to go and do the um, St. Patrick's Day gigs. And we've just kept doing it ever since, and um, I just love it. 
Now good, clean fun. And it, it brings so much joy, this kind of music, you know, and I feel like that's the whole thing about art for me is to bring joy to people. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to ask you to talk a little bit about the mm -hmm. wandering fid fiddlers because they seem to be everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, um, they've, they've decided not to have banjo anymore, and uh, so I'm not in that game oh. anymore, but that's okay. I've got enough irons in the fire as it is. So, yeah, you mentioned the importance of art, and you know, while we still have a few minutes, uh, I always like to talk about like how much art, all the arts, contribute to our communities here. Uh, so what can people like, regular people like me, who have a lot of appreciation but no talent really, do to support the arts within, you know, southeastern Connecticut in particular? Well, attend, you know, musical events if you can and promote them. Um, buy paintings from people if you can, or sculptures. You know, musicians would be kind of lost without people to listen and enjoy the music. I mean, that's, I Leif touched on it a little bit. Uh, the joy of music is part of it is the music itself, but the big part of it, at least for me, and I think for most of us, is in sharing the music with people who appreciate the music, brightening up. You know, there's a lot of things to be anxious about today, uh, and, and to, to be able to just inject a little joy into people's lives with music is the most rewarding thing I've found. Yeah. I know when I moved to New, New London, I, you know, in the late 90s, and I was really impressed by, you know, it was not a rich community and it didn't have a lot of resources, but there was like a big music scene and it made a, a huge difference in just the quality of life. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate the, the contribution of artists and I feel like, you know, you're often kind of taken for granted. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, come on over here. We're going to help you close out your segment. That sounds like a great idea. You, thanking you. Come on over here. By the way, I just want to uh, mention it. Life is an award-winning painter from uh, 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 rec most recent awards are from the Lyme Academy of Art, and his his his, his, art his art creations are amazing at the Spring Street Gallery oh, thank in, you. In, in Chester. It's uh, astounding. Uh, is everybody on camera? No, sir. We're, we're kind of working hours. on it. Uh, you know, this is public access, and I learned a long time ago that people don't expect it to be like bright and shiny and everything go really smoothly. Um, but I think since we do have a few more minutes, maybe e we can go around and each of you can introduce yourself briefly, what instrument you play and like the... Not, not even an elevator speech, but a 30 second or something about how you got involved or something you want to share with the audience? Sure. You, you want to start, Don? Or you want to no, we'll go uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm Bob Lochran, and uh, I, I've been singing now for a few years. And uh, I was started before the pandemic, and, uh, and then I just continued. And I, Michael came to me one, one time, and he said, would you like to sing Danny Boy? for us, and uh, I said, yeah, I'd love to, and uh, Danny Boy led to other songs, and then I became part of the group, and I'm just having a ball. I can't, I, I can't tell you how it, it, it makes me feel so good dealing, you know, playing music with these wonderful people here. And I, I'm Donna. Um, I kind of joined the group because I met Michael. We would work on his sailboat, and then we'd drive uh, on his way home. He would stop and play the fiddle. I would walk his dog. Dana, the woman leading the group, said, did you ever play an instrument? I said, yeah, 50 years ago when I was in high school. So she says, oh, why don't you get a penny whistle? So I got one, and I didn't play it much, and then COVID happened. And I started playing them, and these guys are great. They're all accomplished musicians. I'm a newbie, but they welcome you with open arms. It's, great, it's nice great, huh? that there was one good consequence of the COVID years. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm Michael, Michael Harris. Um, I, at one time I called myself Ernest Song. I had a, a trio, a little band, and uh, actually I have a CD. I call it my million seller because I have a million of them in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a CD called Petrified, if not for you. Um, but then I became uh, fascinated with the, the fiddle and decided I really wanted to focus on that, and that's what I've been doing. And this band has been a great forum for me to, to just play and play and play and play. And I guess you can go again, Leaf. 
I'm Leif Nilsson from Chester, Connecticut, from Old Lyme originally, was born in New London, and I play the banjo and I paint pictures, and I like to spread joy. <laughs> and I'm John Brown, and I really enjoy playing with this band. Uh, I've been doing it for about a year, maybe. Um, I played with the Wandering Fiddle as, as well, uh, still play with them once in a while. I have my Back Porch Pickers Country Rock Band. Uh, I also have a duo called Whiskey and Aspirin, and I just love making music. I also play in... The, the most rewarding thing that I do with music, besides playing for live audiences in the clubs and things, is I play in the nursing homes solo uh, for folks that are, are in wheelchairs, various states of uh, decline or recovery, and uh, it is just wonderful to be able to brighten up people's day, uh, especially people who don't have a whole lot of other stimulation going on in their lives. So music is just the universal gift to humanity, in my opinion, that and love. Well, thank you. <laughs> Ned? Yeah. I actually started doing music with a pair of number two pencils and an old Quaker Oats box sitting in front of my father's record player, but somewhere along the line I got sidetracked into stringed instruments. Uh, we bought my father a guitar as a joke for Father's Day when I was 14, and I've been playing guitar ever since. Uh, up and, and then about I think it was nine years ago for Christmas, my second wife bought me a little ukulele, which I kind of played with, but mostly kept playing guitar. Uh, and after she passed, I became involved with someone, a woman named Sue. Her stage name is Sue Kalele. <laughs> and uh, she and I have a little duo called Two of Us that we've played out two or three times. And I've recently been asked to join a bell choir because they're doing a bell handbell arrangement of Bretta Is's Over the Rainbow and they needed ukulele. Um, Sue and I are going to be playing ukulele and bass ukulele for Easter at my church. And uh, so yeah, it's kind of, I, I've gone from that one little ukulele to I now have 11 counting my two bass ukuleles. <laughs> Alan. Sure. So I've been playing music a long time like most of us here. I was in a punk band actually. Uh, from 1979 to 1980 in Berkeley, California. <laughs> and, uh, I know, right when it was starting. And uh, at the present time, so I'm the guy that Ned ran into on his block. I was just loading my bass in the car like I do a lot. And uh, I was feeling guilty and looking for a bass player, so that's kind of true. And I'm all, I also like to play jazz as well. I'm in a couple of jazz groups called the Skylark Jazz Trio and also the Rovere Cotier Trio. A Rovere Cotier is a very talented uh, jazz musician. And, um, but anyway, the one thing that I particularly like to, about this group, and I think you guys can all relate, is, or I don't know, you may not agree as far as in myself, but uh, um, I've been in a bunch of bands with a lot of jerks <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> not nice people, <laughs> and yeah. you guys are great. It's yeah. always fun to just play music and get together. And so, uh, anyway, that's why I was doing this uh, particular project. And Patrice. So music has been my life. I grew up singing Irish music with my father, and usually a cappella. And I joined several a cappella groups myself after that. But my brother.